Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Michigan City Public Library podcast. I'm Miss Dana, your host, and today we will be celebrating April as National Humor Month. I have a bunch of humorous books to talk about, from classics to new favorites that will make you laugh out loud, for adults to toddlers. But starting out, let's talk about our upcoming events. For adults, we have a Friends of the Library fundraiser on Saturday, April 23rd at 9 a.m. The Collector's Corner Breakfast is back after a two-year hiatus and are very excited. Tickets are $25 and may be purchased at the circulation desk here at the library. All tickets must be purchased in advance as there will not be any sold at the door. Breakfast will be catered by Portofino's and the wonderful Martin Pepke from Kathy's Antiques in Chesterton will be there to appraise items. Each ticket holder may bring one item for appraisal. This event will be held in the Fellowship Hall at St. John's United Church of Christ on St. John Road. On Wednesday, April 27th, join us for an all-day excursion to the Allen County Public Library Genealogy Center in Fort Wayne. The center has an extensive collection of North American genealogy resources, and all books are available in open stacks. It costs $25 to register, and all reservations must be made and paid by April 9th, 2022. For more information and a registration form, visit our events calendar on our website. On all Mondays from 5.30 to 7.30, the Needle Arts Club will be meeting to share their love of the crafts. All ages and skill levels are welcome to join in learning, teaching, and sharing materials. As for youth events, we are excited to announce that Storytime is back in person again. Join us on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. for stories, activities, and crafts. This fun-filled program is back for children aged birth through five years, accompanied by an adult. Our Dungeons & Dragons at MCPL is still online for now, meeting on April 6th and 20th from 3 to 5 p.m. on Zoom. Join us for fun and hilarious adventures and maybe earn yourself a pet dragon. Registration is required on our website. On April 20th at 4 p.m., get creative with paper circuits. Learn to make a paper circuit wristband, a light-up card, or anything you can imagine. For ages 9 and up, supplies are limited. For more information about any of our programs, check our events calendar on our website. And now's the time I'm going to torture you in honor of National Humor Month with some terrible library puns. Why are libraries the tallest buildings in the world? Because they have so many stories. Why did the cardiologist recommend his patients go to the library? He heard they're good for circulation. What advice do you get from a librarian? Believe in your shelf. What did the librarian tell the person who checked out 100 books? Don't overdo it. And I promise that's all for the jokes. I do have some hilariously awesome book recommendations that you want to check out, though. First, for adult books, is the classic The Princess Bride by William Goldman. About a story within a story, no reader can forget such colorful characters such as Wesley, the handsome farm boy who risks death and much, much worse for the woman he loves, Inigo, the Spanish swordsman who lives only to avenge his father's death, Fezzik, the Turk, the gentlest giant ever to have uprooted a tree with his bare hands, Vincini, the evil Sicilian, with a mind so keen he's foiled by his own perfect logic. Prince Humperdinck, the evil ruler of Gilder, who has an equally insatiable thirst for war and the beauteous buttercup. Count Rugen, the evilest man of all, who thrives on the excruciating pain of others. Miracle Max, the king's ex-miracle man, who can raise the dead, kind of. And of course, Buttercup, the princess bride, the most perfect, beautiful woman in the history of the world. S. Morgenstern's timeless tale, discovered and wonderfully abridged by William Goldman, pits country against country, good versus evil, love versus hate. You can find The Princess Bride in the adult fiction section under Goldman William or in the DVDs under Princess. Next is Is This Anything by Jerry Seinfeld. 
Jerry Seinfeld has selected his favorite material from 45 years worth of saved notes organized decade by decade. In page after hilarious page, one brilliantly crafted observation after another, readers will witness the evolution of one of the greatest comedians of our time and gain new insights into the thrilling but unforgiving art of writing stand-up comedy. You can find Is This Anything in the adult nonfiction section under call number 792.76SE44I. Next is the science fiction classic, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, by Douglas Adams. Seconds before Earth is demolished to make way for a galactic freeway, Arthur Dent is plucked off the planet by his friend, Ford Prefect, a researcher for the revised edition of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Together, this dynamic pair begins a journey through space aided by a galaxy full of fellow travelers. Zaphod Beeblebrox, the two-headed, three-armed ex-hippie and totally out-to-lunch president of the galaxy. Trillian, Zaphod's girlfriend, whom Arthur tried to pick up at a cocktail party once upon a time zone. Marvin, a paranoid, brilliant, and chronically depressed robot. And Viet Vu Jagig, a former graduate student obsessed with the disappearance of all the ballpoint pens he's bought over the years. Where are these pens? Why are we born? Why do we die? For all the answers, stick your thumb to the stars. You can find The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy under Adams Douglas in the adult science fiction section. And finally, a book that made me laugh hysterically and also cry a little, Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. Lawson says, some people might think that being furiously happy is just an excuse to be stupid and irresponsible and invite a herd of kangaroos over to your house without telling your husband first because you suspect he would say no since he's never particularly liked kangaroos. And that would be ridiculous because no one would invite a herd of kangaroos into their house. Two is the limit. I speak from personal experience. My husband says that none is the new limit. I say he should have been clearer about that before I rented all those kangaroos. Furiously Happy is about taking those moments when things are fine and making them amazing because those moments are what make us who we are and they're the same moments we take into battle with us when our brains declare war on our very existence. It's the difference between surviving life and living life. It's the difference between taking a shower and teaching your monkey butler how to shampoo your hair. It's the difference between being sane and being furiously happy. You can find Furiously Happy in the adult biography section under Lawson, Jenny. Moving into young adult books, This Will Be Funny Someday by Katie Henry is about 16-year-old Izzy who's used to keeping her thoughts to herself in school where her boyfriend is the talking for her and at home where it's impossible to compete with her older siblings and high-powered parents. When she mistakenly walks into a stand-up comedy club and performs, the experience is surprisingly cathartic. After the show, she meets Mo, an aspiring comic whose everything Izzy's not, bold, confident, comfortable in her skin. Mo invites Izzy to join her group of friends and introduces her to the Chicago open mic scene. Now Izzy, the dutiful daughter and model student, is sneaking out to perform stand-up with her comedy friends. But Izzy loves comedy and this newfound freedom. As her two parallel lives collide, in the most hilarious of ways, Izzy must choose to either hide what she really wants and who she really is, or finally truly stand up for herself. You can find This Will Be Funny Someday in the young adult section under Henry Katie. Next is The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi. This tells the story of Junior, a budding cartoonist growing up in the Spokane Indian Reservation. Determined to take his future into his own hands, Junior leaves his troubled school on the res to attend an all-white farm town high school where the only other Indian is the school mascot. Heartbreaking, funny, and beautifully written, The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian, which is based on the author's own experiences, 
chronicles the contemporary adolescence of one Native American boy as he attempts to break away from the life he was destined to live. You can find the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian in the young adult section under Alexi Sherman. Next is Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. It is a universally acknowledged truth that high school sucks. But on the first day of his senior year, Greg Gaines thinks he's figured it out. The answer to the basic existential question, how is it possible to exist in a place that sucks so bad? His strategy? Remain in the periphery at all times. Keep an insanely low profile. Make mediocre films with the one person who is even sort of his friend, Earl. This plan works for exactly eight hours. Then Greg's mom forces him to become friends with a girl who has cancer. This brings about the destruction of Greg's entire life. You can find Me and Earl and the Dying Girl in the Young Adult section under Andrew's Jesse. And finally for YA is Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry. When Michael walks through the doors of Catholic school, things can't get much worse. His dad just made the family move again, and Michael needs a friend. When a girl challenges their teacher in class, Michael thinks he might have found one, and a fellow atheist did that. Only this girl, Lucy, isn't just Catholic. She wants to be a priest. Lucy introduces Michael to other St. Clair outcasts, and he officially joins Heretics Anonymous, where he can be an atheist, Lucy can be an outspoken feminist, Avi can be Jewish and gay, Max can wear whatever he wants, and Eden can practice paganism. Michael encourages the heretics to go from a secret society to rebels, intent on exposing the school's hypocrisies one stunt at a time. But when Michael takes one mission too far, putting the other heretics at risk, he must decide whether to fight for his own freedom or rely on faith, whatever that means, in God, his friends, or himself. You can find Heretics Anonymous in the Young Adult section under Henry Katie. For middle schoolers who want to laugh, we have Pretty Funny for a Girl by Rebecca Elliott. Hala Swinton is an ace best friend, a loving daughter, and incredibly patient sister to her four-year-old brother. Best of all, she's pretty confident she's mastered making light of every situation, from her mom's new boyfriend to unsolicited remarks about her plus-size figure. Besides, she has a big secret. One day, she'll be a stand-up comedian star. So when impossibly cool Leo reveals he's also into comedy, Hala jumps at the chance to ghostwrite his sets. But is Leo as interested in returning the favor? Even though her friends warn her of Leo's intentions, Hala's not ready to listen, and she might just be digging herself deeper towards heartbreak. If Hala's ever going to step into the spotlight, she'll need to find the confidence to put herself out there and strut like the boss she really is. You can find Pretty Funny for a Girl in the Juvenile Fiction section under Elliot Rebecca. Next is Stand Up Yumi Chung by Jessica Kim. On the outside, Yumi Chung suffers from being shy, a perm gone wrong, and kids calling her names because she smells like her family's Korean barbecue restaurant. On the inside, Yumi is ready for her Netflix stand-up special. Her notebook is filled with mortifying memories that she's reworked into comedy gold. All she needs is a stage and courage. One day after class, Yumi stumbles on an opportunity that will change her life, a comedy camp for kids taught by one of her favorite YouTube stars. The only problem is that the instructor and all the kids think she's a girl named Kei Nakamura, and Yumi doesn't correct them. As this case of mistaken identity unravels, Yumi must decide to stand up and reveal the truth or risk losing her dreams and disappointing everyone she cares about. You can find Stand Up Yumi Chung in the J Fiction section under Kim Jessica. Next is the hilarious classic that I grew up with, Captain Underpants by Dave Pilkey. 
In Captain Underpants and the Attack of the Talking Toilets, George and Harold's latest prank backfires and they accidentally invent an army of terrifying talking toilets. Luckily, they know a superhero with enough snap in his waistband to save the day. You can find all of our Captain Underpants books in the J Fiction section under Pilkey Dave. And finally, for juvenile fiction, is Junie B. Jones and the Stupid Smelly Bus by Barbara Park. In the first Junie B. Jones book, it is Junie B.'s first day, and she doesn't know anything. She's so scared of the school bus and the meanies on it that when it's time to go home, she doesn't. We have the Junie B. Jones series in the juvenile fiction section under Park Barbara. And finally, we have some picture books that will make your toddler giggle. First is Splat by John Bergerman. See what happens when flipping the page of this gleeful picture book gets you a splat, a pie in the face, followed by squish, an insect sandwich, and splash, a deluge of water balloons. Bright colors and appealing visual gags add up to a perfect mess, no cleanup necessary. You can find Splat in the picture book section under Bergerman John. Next is Monsters 101 by Kale Atkinson. Monsters. There's so much more than just that scary thing under your bed. Join Professors Batula McFang, Blobbins, and Howlsworth, and their trusty lab assistant, a zombie named Tina, as they reveal eerie and frankly ridiculous monster facts never uttered outside a crypt. For example, monsters love competitive board game nights. Favorite monster foods include clam pudding with fish heads and pickled ant ice cream. In addition to cauldrons and spider gardens, monster homes often include homemade collages. Werewolves hate the sound of vacuum cleaners. Monsters aren't all scary. Try being nice to one and you'll find out for yourself. You can find Monsters 101 in the picture book section under Atkinson Kale. And finally, for our funny fictions, is Shrek by William Stieg. This is the original story about Shrek, a horrid little ogre who goes out into the world to find adventure and along the way encounters a witch, a knight in armor, a dragon, and finally, a hideous princess who's even uglier than he is. We have Shrek in the picture book section under Stieg William. We also have all the films in the JDVD section under Shrek. To wrap up this month's podcast, I'd like to add a short review of my favorite book that I read in March. For the Wolf by Hannah F. Witten is an adult fiction novel about Red, the only second daughter born in centuries. Her purpose in life is to be sacrificed to the wolf of the wood in hope that he'll return the world's captured gods. Red is almost relieved to go. Plagued by a dangerous power she can't control, at least she knows in the Wilderwood she can't hurt those she loves. But the legends lie. The wolf is a man, not a monster. Her magic is a calling, not a curse. And if she doesn't learn how to use it, the monsters the gods have become will swallow the Wilderwood and her world whole. This was a wonderful fairy tale that was almost equal parts Beauty and the Beast and Little Red Riding Hood, with a dash of Howl's Moving Castle. I did struggle in the beginning with how slow the pacing was, but around the halfway point, I just sped through the end. Many reviews on Goodreads say that it's an interesting look into someone slowly going mad, but I disagree. I don't think the other sister ever went mad. I think she knew what she was doing and was so focused and determined that she didn't see the things that were truly going on around her. I think that she is still very much in charge of her senses, and I look forward to her point of view in the second book. I absolutely loved the slow burn romance in this. I love the romantic interest. He is like the dream guy and he would literally burn the world down for his love interest. I loved that they had to trust each other and slowly fall for one another rather than instantly falling in love and not fixing everything. 
you really got to see them struggle and learn together and have to learn how to lean on one another. Overall, I really just liked it immensely from the romance to the plot. You can find For the Wolf in the adult fiction section under Witten, Hannah. Thank you so much for tuning into this month's podcast and keep an eye out for the later episode this month where I interview another librarian. Enjoy your current read and hopefully we'll see you in the library again very soon. Bye!